Yuji and Maki. For the longest time, these characters have been known as some of the strongest and simplest in terms of power and moveset. Dating back to even season 1, Yuji and Maki are described as purely physical fighters, sorcerers who don't rely on the jujutsu that is so important to the rest of the verse. Despite both characters being nowhere near their primes in the role of jujutsu society at this point in the story, Gege made it very obvious that these two would continuously be benchmarks of what physical strength in close quarters combat could achieve in the face of overwhelming hacks and wild curse techniques. Yuji, before even gaining the ability to use cursed energy, is able to absolutely shatter world records of strength, speed, stamina, and resilience. He can run faster than a car, jump multiple stories in a single bound, and fight evenly with supernatural cursed spirits without having the proper tools to exercise them. And Maki, well, Maki is just as impressive because of her heavenly restriction. She's shown early on to be able to decimate most sorcerers in a close fight. She demonstrates an absolute mastery of martial arts and a high level of competence with numerous different weapons. And on top of all of this, she's fast enough to catch a literal point-blank bullet being shot at her while she is off guard. Needless to say, these two in season 1 are the top dogs when it comes to punching and kicking. This top dog status though gets pretty quickly ripped away when you take a look at the manga and when we get introduced to a new top tier physical fighter in Toji Fushiguro. Toji's introduction to the series does a plethora of different things for the narrative, characters, and overarching story of Jujutsu Kaisen. But for Maki and Yuji, what he does is pretty simple. He is an example of something that lies beyond where they are. He is a close quarter specialist that possesses no domain expansion, no curse technique, and certainly no cursed energy, but he is able to take down two sorcerers that stand at the peak of the Jujutsu world at the time, all through physical strength and ability. What Toji shows to us is that Yuji and Maki have room to grow. It shows us the viability of being a purely physical fighter, and it shows us that even though our two characters are really strong and already really competent, it shows that they are still small fish in an ocean of power. Something the next arc of the series continued to show us. The Shibuya Incident arc introduced us to many different power levels and abilities that we hadn't had demonstrated to us in the story up to this point. But the one thing that this arc had shown us more than anything is that characters like Yuji and Maki in their current state were not going to be able to keep up with the rest of their peers if they didn't grow and fast. Both Yuji and Maki get outperformed numerous times in this arc, and while Yuji especially has some triumphs that shouldn't be downplayed at all, it's obvious that he isn't hitting the ceiling of his potential, and the potential we saw Toji put on full display in the Star Plasma Vessel arc and even in Shibuya itself. The arcs following Shibuya and its aftermath give us the strength and character development that Yuji and Maki needed to close the gap between them in some of the top tier monsters of the Jujutsu Kaisen universe. Maki's path to power is much more linear and happens much quicker than Yuji's does as we follow her having two mini arcs centering around her character and power progression. The first arc gives her a body equal to that of Toji's and the second awakening gives her the eyes and mindset required to utilize that body properly. With this, Maki instantly became one of Jujutsu Kaisen's greatest physical fighters, and Yuji didn't take too long to follow suit, as in the span of one chapter, just one chapter, Yuji's power grew dramatically from the rage of Sukuna's torment, and allowed him to even withstand a weakened Sukuna's onslaught of attacks, and land a cathartic blow on the King of Curses, and all of that led us to this very moment. Chapter 215, Yuji and Maki, versus Sukuna. Because of Megami weakening the potency of Sukuna's output whenever he directs his technique at his friends, Sukuna is forced to take a more hands-on approach, going back and forth physically with Maki and Yuji in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, this chapter is great on many different levels, but one of the things that I found most impressive is that this could almost act as a textbook chapter on how to depict a fight between several characters who are all competent with close quarters combat. It's obvious to anyone that reads the series that JJK has great fights pretty consistently, especially when it comes to choreography, but Gege took the gloves 
off with this fight and really allows us to get some impressive displays of technique on Maki's part as she receives a strike from Sukuna, puts him in a wrist lock, backhands him before slamming him into a wall with a double palm strike. Now, maybe I'm the crazy one, but seeing Maki effortlessly pull off all of these pretty high level movements on Sukuna that require extreme precision, weakened or not, does a lot to show that Maki is not just a ball of muscle, but rather is a fighter that is truly supreme in the domain of hand-to-hand -hand combat. She isn't just strong, she isn't just fast, she isn't just durable, but she's competent with weapons and she sure as hell is competent with giving characters these hands. It really gives us a sort of small payoff to all of the training and all of the work that she put in before both of her awakenings, and it makes Maki seem even more competent, showing that she has an extreme amount of skill to deal with someone like Sukuna. And Yuji, being the skilled and quick-witted fighter that he is, jumps on the opportunity that Maki gave to wrap Sukuna up with some broken gates, setting Maki up for yet another blow to Sukuna's body. This very quick exchange of blows from Maki and Yuji let me know exactly what type of chapter this was about to be. I couldn't believe it at first, but Gege was setting us up for another Jujutsu Kaisen jumping. Now, if you're like me, up to this point, Yuji and Maki being anywhere near each other in terms of speed and strength may have been hard to believe, especially when you consider how quickly Yuji got his power boost. But just as you have time to think this, just as you have time to think that maybe Maki is holding back to fight with Yuji, she tells him that she's about to speed up and they dash into action with Sukuna responding in kind. And let me just say, this page is so cool. Not only do Maki and Yuji pull off the coolest poses ever as they run towards Sukuna, but right before fully closing the distance, Maki grabs Yuji's leg and swings him around like a sword to hit Sukuna. Am I crazy or was that crazy? Like, okay, my lizard brain taking over aside, right? It's got to be acknowledged how in sync these two are at this moment. There is no way they could have possibly communicated their strategy beforehand. Maki and Yuji didn't talk about this. They didn't plan this, at least in a verbal sense, because we literally see them right before they dash off. And besides saying that they're about to speed up, no words and exchange. And from what we've seen, this is one of the only times Maki and Yuji even interact outside of the Goodwill arc, which means that this isn't some strategy or battle plan that they've implemented before this. And that means that Yuji and Maki immediately dash towards Sukuna. And in the time between their dash and closing the distance, they were able to get a gauge on their speed, their distance and timing all with such precision that even Sukuna was temporarily caught off guard by their movement. Now, Sukuna being Sukuna adapts and reacts accordingly to this wild tactic, but just the fact that these two were able to pull off a combo move that caught him off guard while having never fought with each other before is insane in and of itself. Now, I would give all the credit to Maki on this one, considering that she took the lead in this dance, if you will. But honestly, when I thought about it some more, I realized I got to give Yuji his props for this as well, because his adaptability and malleability proves to be consistently ridiculous when fighting under new circumstances with new allies. With Toto, he adapted to Boogie Woogie and was able to sync up perfectly despite its disorienting effects. With Nobara, he perfectly played to her strengths and did his best to conceal her weaknesses. With Megami, while it was difficult, he matched his movements with his own and pulled off a very precise series of attacks in order to take down their opponent. Even with Toto again in Shibuya, we see that they are able to harmonize instantly and become a well-oiled machine with the sole purpose of taking Mahito down. Time and time and time again, Yuji has shown that he can quickly change to match the movements of whoever he is fighting with, and I am inclined to give a lot of credit to him for matching up with someone as powerful as Maki. Their efforts are rewarded for a split second, as it looks like the two were able to get the upper hand on Sukuna. This upper hand doesn't last long though, as we see that Sukuna is able to fend off Maki's flurry of attacks with one hand and Yuji's barrage with the other, before destroying their footing and hitting Maki with an absolute haymaker that she tanks? Yeah, so Maki just eats that punch from Sukuna, which, 
not only garnered her some of my respect, but seemingly also Suguna's, as he dishes out his second Maki compliment of the fight. This is two more compliments than I think we've ever seen him give Yuji, which just goes to show how different Maki is when it comes to fighting. Anyways, after Maki tanks a punch from Sukuna like an absolute badass, we see the three characters bounce around amongst the scattered debris and ping pong between each foothold at ridiculous speeds before finding more solid ground. At this point, I was completely caught up in this chapter and I was ready for the fighting to continue, but unfortunately, this epic dynamic duo gets their spotlight stolen by Irame and her glacial curse technique. After this, Sukuna and Irame fly off on the back of Nue, preparing to make Megumi a more proper vessel and laughing at the misfortune of Yuji, a pathetic brat who, despite his efforts, couldn't save his friend. Now, depressing chapter conclusions aside, Maki and Yuji getting to fight side by side, even if it was only for a little bit, was definitely something that I'm glad we got to see. And if you remember my video talking about last chapter, you may remember me hypothesizing that Yuji and Maki's strength gap may have closed. And I think this chapter kinda gets me closer to that conclusion. I definitely think Maki's portrayal is better here as Sukuna and Arame deemed Maki the bigger threat, but Yuji being able to keep up with Maki speeding up is impressive in and of itself. And it's something I don't think he would have been able to do even just two chapters ago. As someone who's been caping for a Yuji power-up for the longest, I'm honestly proud and just happy that Yuji is still showing those signs of potential and growth that Gojo saw in him all those chapters ago. You can still tell that he hasn't fully realized the potential that lies inside of him, but he's getting closer. And that's as good as it seems Gege is going to give us right now. Speaking of Gege, he throws us a bone this chapter by having Sukuna comment on Yuji's potential heritage as he and Arame mention that he looks like someone they knew from Harima, the origin of sorcerers. This is most likely a callback to Sukuna saying that Yuji was from back then, so it's pretty clear to see that Gege is feeding us breadcrumbs about Yuji's origin and maybe giving us the chance to predict or at least get a general idea of what Yuji truly is. Maybe we'll get some more definitive info on his full origins in the near future, or knowing Gege, maybe we won't, and that'll get put off for a later, more relevant point in the story. But what I do know for certain is that Gege gave us yet another great jumping, this time involving two characters that work surprisingly well in a fight, and I can't wait to see more group battles involving these two in the future. Yuji and Maki may not have been able to take down the likes of Sukuna in this battle, which, I mean, come on, it's to be expected, it's Sukuna, right? But what they did do is show the viability of this duo, and it's given us a hint of what two insanely strong characters can get done in battle if they play to their strengths. Sure, Sukuna was weakened, and sure, he wasn't really using his techniques to the maximum at which he could, but I think there's something to be said about Yuji and Maki fighting Sukuna and simply going toe to toe with him because Maki didn't go all out either. Soul Splitter never made its way into this fight and we know that that is her greatest way to deal out damage. So I'm really excited to see what we could possibly get from Maki against Sukuna if she were to really go all out and bring out her soul splitting ability. In any case, I think these two have a lot of potential together as a dynamic duo. Yuji as a demon god and Maki as a god of war form a powerful and even scary team that I think with time and individual growth can become a pair who could take down even the strongest of opponents.